This is a three-button transcription foot pedal. Featuring rear pivoting buttons and a USB interface, I thought this was a pretty good score at a thrift store. Now I'd pick this up because I figured I must be able to come up with some kind of use for it, and uh, gee it would have made sense if I'd started using this when I started adding subtitles to my YouTube videos, but that would have made too much sense. But anyway, I finally have a use for it and I'm really looking forward to getting it implemented, because I recently got a new USB microphone to use to make my videos. This is a Moran's MPM 2000U, a USB condenser microphone. Unfortunately, yes, you heard me right, this is a USB microphone, so I can't connect it to my camera while I'm recording. This means that I have to use a computer to record it while I'm making my videos, which sucks. But it also means that I have to start recording on two different devices now. Which brings me back to the USB foot pedal. I want to use this to control audio being recorded by my computer while I'm filming. I figure if I can control it as a foot pedal, I'll be more likely to remember to actually do it and not screw up all the audio in my videos. But that means I need to do some custom configurations in Linux. Now before we get started setting this up in Linux, I just want to point out that even in Windows here, this device just shows up as a regular human interface device, not as a keyboard, and it doesn't do anything by default. So what I'm about to show you how to do in Linux, you would still have to do something like in Windows to be able to make this do what you want. Before we get started setting this up in Linux, I want to let you know that I've created a GitHub repository with a much more detailed set of instructions. So if you have a difficult time following along with this video, or just want to be able to see exactly the commands I'm running, go check that out. I put a link in the description to it. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new UDEV file that will be loaded by the operating system that says how our device will be configured. We're going to go ahead and add this line to the file, and the parts that are the 4Ys and the 4Xs we need to replace with the USB vendor and product IDs. Now we can get those by running an ls usb command with the device connected, and then looking for something that looks like what our device would be reported as. So in my case, it's obviously a foot pedal, so we can assume that's it. Now these two IDs are what we're looking for, so I'm going to go ahead and copy those, then I'm going to go back and edit my file and put those in there. Now, now I just copied and pasted these values in here, but you can't actually do that because these need to be all caps for UDEV to recognize it to work properly. So make sure you update it like that. So that's what I need to identify my foot pedal to Linux. I'm gonna go ahead and write and quit that. Now the next thing we need to do is figure out what the event number is for our device. So I'm going to do ls, dev input and from here we can see we have several event files now these are just virtual interfaces to the hardware itself so we need to figure out which one of these is mapped to our input device it's easiest to do this by using the by id folder so we can look through here and we can again find something that looks like my foot pedal so what we're going to do is do ls-l which will tell us where the file is actually located because everything in the by id folder is a symbolic link so we can see the foot pedal is event 21. now the actual event file there doesn't really matter all that much because you can also just use a symbolic link for the next step either way works i just tend to work with the event number files now the next step is actually going to be figuring out the scan codes for your generic input device. So we need to figure out what those are so we can remap them. Now that we have the event file location, we need to figure out what the scan codes for your generic input device are. So we're going to run an EV test on it to figure out what the scan codes for each individual button are. So once we run that, we'll see it's brought up some generic information about the device. And we can see it is my VEC USB foot pedal. Now I'm going to press every button on the device that I want to remap. So left button, middle button, and right button. So we can see that my device's scan codes are 90001, 90002, and 90003. So those are the scan codes I'm going to remap to regular keys. Now we can quit this and go back to the hardware device rules. And we're going to add the information about what our scan codes are. The way these work is you need to have the keyboard underscore key underscore scan code to identify which keys you want to remap. So if you had different scan code numbers, you would just replace that part with what yours is. Since mine were the 90,000 numbers, 
I have to use these. And that's just about everything you need to know to be able to remap this. So what we're going to do now is set this to some standard keys. So this is all you have to do. We can set this to say A, we can set this one to W, and we can set this one to D. So that's it. That will allow us to remap the buttons on my foot pedal to standard keyboard keys. Let's go ahead and save this file. And now we need to reload the configuration to update the system. So there are two commands to do this. And once all that's done, we can start pushing buttons on our device and have them show up as custom keys. Now, these particular keys I just bound are, um, well, standard movement keys in video games. So let's go ahead and try out using my foot pedal for character movement in a first person shooter. I think that pretty well demonstrates how even just a simple three pedal device like this could be used for accessibility for something like gaming. Now while it is useful to be able to bind specific single keys to the buttons, it's somewhat limited still. We can't do macros for doing more complex actions in different software, such as what I want to use, our door. Now our door would be just fine with the single button mapping, except for the fact that in order to record, you have to push shift R to start the record feature. So simply pushing R or space isn't going to be sufficient. And every time you go to start a recording, you have to push that. After you stop recording, it's unselected. So it doesn't work. I need a more complicated key mapping. We're gonna go back and edit our UDEV configuration file again. But this time we're gonna change the keys from just standard keys like you might expect to see to more peculiar ones. I'm going to set it to F16 through F18. These keys do technically still exist in the scan interpretation software, they're just not put on keyboards anymore. So we can use those to our advantage because you're not likely to need to be able to press those keys in any of the programs you use. What we'll do from here is create some kind of mapping for those keys to depress key shortcuts or combinations. Now I'm gonna show you two different ways you can do this. One way will be creating a script that reads the key presses and then running commands to press key combinations. And the other is xbind keys, which will automate the process and make it a lot simpler to set up, but doesn't give you as much control with what you can do with it. So first let's look at the script solution. In the GitHub repository, I've included a file that demonstrates how you can set this up. So let's go through how this works. So first we have this really long command that sets a variable called id. So the first part of this command is running x input list, which gives us a list of all of the x server input devices. We can see here that my foot pedal is device 18. 
Now we need this number so we can identify it with the X input test command we're going to be using that reads key scan codes from a device. Now from the X input list, we get this really long output that can't be easily put into a variable. So the next few commands are simply just stripping away everything except for the ID for one particular row. So what you would need to do if you wanted to use this file yourself is change out where it says VEC to something else unique that identifies your device in the X input list. Then the rest would take care of it for you and you'd get the ID back. After we get the ID, we just print it out to ensure that it's working. Once you have the X input ID, we're going to go through and read each line that the command X input test spits out. So when we run the X input test command for my device, which is ID 18, and I press the buttons on the device, we can see that we get a different output for each one when it is depressed and released. Now the depression and released outputs aren't quite true. It's doing a virtual key press, so I'm still holding the key down and it continues to output release signals, which aren't really that helpful. We would have to get a little more complicated and use EV test to read the key inputs, which is doable, but, but just a little more complicated. But let's continue with this. So we can see here that we have the key presses with the numbers and we're gonna go ahead and read those in the file up here. So every time a new line comes in, it's put into the variable in, and then we check if that line equals one of these lines. And when it does, it just runs a script with a parameter that is the key that was pressed. Now, if we look at the input action script here, we can see that we save that parameter to a variable called button, and then we have a simple if statement tree for each button possibility that we would want to handle. Inside of the if statements, we have another command called XDO tool. This is a tool that allows you to send virtual key presses to the X server. You will need to install this to be able to use it in your scripts. But to use it, all you have to do is XDO tool, key, and then the name of a key to be able to send a specific key press. There are more complicated commands such as key down, and key up that you may want to use if you're going to send a more complicated key sequence. But if you don't need to press certain keys in a specific order, then you could probably get away with just the key option. Now the names for the keys you use with XDO tool aren't necessarily the most intuitive things, and you may have a difficult time figuring out which is what. Now in order to figure out what key names you need to use with XDO tool, you may want to use another program called Zev. With it, you can just depress any key on the keyboard and it will output the name of the key that you pressed here. So for example, page down shows up as next and page up shows up as prior. So that's why I had to use those names in my script for Blender. So this setup here is actually for Blender. We have next, which is actually page up and prior, which is page down bound to the outer buttons on my foot pedal. And then alt A is the Blender shortcut for starting playback of the animation. So with this set, we can close this, run, key listen, and now every time I press a key, something will happen. So let's go ahead and open a Blender project and see how that works. So if I push the buttons on the sides of my pedal, then it will skip forward and back over the tracks in the VSE. And if I push the center pedal, it will begin playback. And then I can push it again to pause it. Then we can just close this script by hitting Control C, and that's it. So that's how you can set it up with a script to be able to read the key inputs. Now let's look at how you can do it with XBind keys. Now to set up XBind keys, first you're going to need to install it with the simple apt-get command. But after you do that, you'll want to run this command, which will create a default configuration file in your home directory. After you've created the initial configuration file, all you have to do is just edit it, and then you can put in the keys that you want to respond to. These are what I've added after the default example one it has here. We can actually comment this out because we don't need that. So I'm running the notify send command, which just lets you have a notification pop up with your desktop environment. And then these are the keys I'm responding to. So in the example up here, we can see that control shift Q would have run the X bind keys show command but I have these weird ones. Well, those weird keys I'm using are actually the scan codes for F16 through F18. If we run X input test again and press our keys, we'll see that those are the numbers that are being output. 
you can just put F16, F17, and F18 into XBind Key's configuration file, but I find using the scan codes to be a little bit more precise when you're using really weird keys like this. Once you have a configuration file defined, you can just go ahead and save it, but then you need to start XBind Keys. Now, if you want XBind Keys to run every time you start your computer, you can also do auto start it as a separate command that will configure it to start up every time. For now, let's just go ahead and start it, and I'll press a key on my pedal, and you can see in the upper right, I got a notification that I pressed the middle pedal. Now I'll press the left and the right. So that was a very easy setup for getting commands to register from key presses. Just like with the custom script we did, you can use XDO tools with XBind keys to send a single command of a shortcut key, or you might be better off using a separate script like input action that interprets those key signals into other key combinations. XBind keys can only output one single command for each key press. Well, I think that's everything I wanted to cover about setting up a custom input device in Linux. I hope this information is useful to people, especially if you're trying to set up an accessibility device. I could see these foot pedals, which are like 20 bucks used on eBay, being very cheap, easy options for people who may not be able to use their computers in the traditional ways. Or maybe you just want to be a power user or like me, have a situation where you can't normally access your mouse and keyboard, and it's just more convenient to set it up like this. Either way, I hope that was useful, and I'll see you next time.